All right, I finished rebuilding the Ares science vessel, but this time it is so different on the inside of this fairing that we've named it the Unity science vessel, and it has a slightly different mission this time around. Previously, its mission was to go to the moon and uh, do you know some exploratory stuff there, pick up as much science and come back. However, this has been outfitted for a Minmus mission, so we're moving on up. <clears throat> we've got a few more biomes that we could get on the moon and we will get there uh, eventually but we you know we gotta do we gotta do some new stuff right we can't just do moon all of the time i mean we just made an awesome uh, space station and we're gonna add a few more here in the near future but we we want to go to the minmus with this new thing and really test it out however before we do that we actually have a scheduled test for the uh the magnus rover I named it the Magnus Rover 2 because there it's it's gone through some massive variations to say the least. So this is how it starts out. Now you may look at it and be like, "Oh, that totally that doesn't look like it would work at all." It totally does. Let's 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 show you. It's fitted with all of the science parts. So <clears throat> its goal is to basically hit the ground running and go to different biomes and bring the science back to the the you know whatever ship has carried it there the kerbals would then extract it and uh, you can go get more so it starts in a position like this because it sits on the bottom of a craft and the docking port is is lower than these pieces however these pieces are controlled so uh, I have servos that that change them so it would land on its butt like so and it has a skid plate on the bottom it's just a, basically an extra piece that i put down there to make sure that it's not killing that hard drive uh, and it has pretty good crash resistance so that uh, falls down on its butt and then you just you know basically unfold your wheels and now you're ready to go it drives pretty well and it's fairly stable uh there are some exceptions to that and i'll show you what i mean so for the most part this is a pretty stable craft it, it drives well it has all of the science bits that we need it's got some sturdy wheels uh my first iteration of this had the the wheels that had air in them but they tended to to pop very easily which is really annoying it has some mono propellant because it'll be in low gravity situations so it's got some um some thrusters basically if, if i flip over i can fix that i have some solar panels because that helps with power generation there's a um a way to communicate if I need to back with the main vessel. I have light setup. We'll test those. This is basically, a, you know, a, a scheduled test that we have to do with the Magnus. Uh, we have a couple hard drives on the back. We have one on the bottom. Underneath the panels here is actually a battery. So we have a single battery down there. Then you have the Science Junior, the Mystery Goo, the soil samples, and then we have uh, Johnny Five up on the front. The real only new thing that we haven't seen yet, uh, especially on other vessels aside from the wheels, is these. So th these are uh, just a way of generating power without needing solar panels. They're not necessarily you know, more power. Like if you had really big solar panels, you're going to generate more power than a few of these that you could put on. But these are really nice for, you know, generating just enough power to keep me powered at night. So let's give this thing a whirl. Uh, like I said, you can adjust it. So the thing is when you start uh, driving it pretty quickly, it becomes a little top heavy. And that's just because our, our weight is in the center. So if you go to turn, it starts to want to flip. So instead, what we've done with the servos, and this was part of the original design, let's stop. It does a little cool little wheelie. Uh, the, the design with the servos is to make sure that you can get as low as possible, which then puts your center of mass lower to the ground. So, oh, I've broken it. That was because the wheels uh, had the brakes on. The brakes actually do kind of mess with how the servos sit when you stop in wheelie. So having the mass lower to the ground, the center of mass lower to the ground, then allows you to get up to speed and start making those turns and not necessarily be super, um, I guess, top heavy. So you're going to flip yourself. It still kind of does it every now and then. And it's just something that you should watch out for. However, the thing is really awesome. We can we can bring it up a bit. 
and we'll see just how how good it is at uh, staying stable and also how strong it is so you can go over little things launch is pretty good the skid plate makes sure that it's not gonna have any issues and the main problem that i've run into and i did that test on purpose we're gonna revert in here in a second is these wheels they do this the track comes off the other wheels that i would use um it, it would basically pop and you wouldn't be able to fix it. However, with Kerbal Attachment System plus some other things, we've managed to get wheels here that are easier fixed than the other ones. So I could, uh, you know, say this happens on a mission and I'm kind of broken. I'm I'm pretty good off actually for quite a while. I could drive on this, you know, it's, it's maneuverable because one wheel is good enough, uh, surprisingly. The other ones just kind of keep it on the ground. However, it's fixable. And that was my main design here. So let's go back to launch. Um, yeah, the, it, it's supposed to be maneuverable. It's supposed to be good enough to, uh, you know, to to get around on a surface that may not necessarily be super smooth, and it should be stable so it won't flip over. I made it so it's pretty strong. So unless you're really going nuts on it, uh, then. You know, like I said, how I did that little jump thing. Uh, unless you're doing that kind of stuff, it won't necessarily break the skid plate on the bottom. Make sure that if there's a lot of uh, changes in elevation, it's not going to break everything on the bottom. And I'm using these aeroplanes, actually. These little, like... Um, I don't even know what they're called. The trailing edge, that's what it is. And it actually acts as a pretty good bumper. So for this, uh, for example, I'll show you. You can actually go over objects. You won't really come across this kind of stuff on them. The, you know, min miss or stuff like that, but it's it's doable, right? And you can, um, oh, I gotta get off that little thing, but you can you can adjust your height and it it'll allow you to uh, to bounce over things and it's it actually works quite well. I'm, I was a little surprised with how maneuverable it can be with objects. Uh, I my first iteration where these mono propellant tanks were, it had wheels that would go up and down, so I had. Um, a servo that was vertical and it pulled the wheels up so that way you could still do this with it and just park it um, and it had the servos come down so the middle wheels would be able to touch and it allowed us to get over things like this a lot easier however uh, it proved to be too bulky especially on the the side weight so it still made it a little too top heavy so this is the different iteration of it it's just really good. So we have a test that we need to do with it. We need to get it over to some uh, not flat areas. And that's going to just pretty much lead us off over to these areas. So we're going to drive this thing around. And then we're also going to test it uh, during the night. Uh, just to make sure all the lights are going to work. Uh, as you can see, I have the two lights. And we can even bring it down a bit. There we go. I have two lights on the bottom here. So I have one right there and then one right there. And they act as pretty good headlights. But I also do have lights uh, across the other pieces of it. So if I do need to f work on it uh, with a curveball, I don't have to do it on the light side of a planet. I can, I can definitely do it in the dark and not have to worry about how the lighting will be. But overall, I'm really impressed with this rover. It's out of my own personal time. It's probably been... Uh, two months, maybe two and a half months in the making. I've gone through several iterations of it, but uh, this is definitely the one that I like the most. And I may, I may alter it in the future. And it's, it's good enough that you can do that. And it's got a pretty good top speed. I've considered throwing Mech Jab on it, so you can autopilot it. But uh, I haven't done that yet. Maybe I'll do that before you know I use it in any real capacity. However, I don't think it's necessarily needed because I I want to be watching it. I want to make sure that nothing's going to happen to it even though I have it so it can be repaired quite easily. And I just wanted to point out, look, the power is completely full. So if it's during the day, I don't have any power issues. If it's during the night, if I'm doing a lot of crazy stuff, then I, I get some electrical issues, but uh, for the most part, it's fine. Also, the other thing with these generators is they're really nice for say you're on the dark side of a planet and you accidentally drain all your power because you had like SAS on or something. Um, I said, did I say planet or power? You drain all your power. I think that's what I said. Uh, you you can have these generate enough electricity for you just to get around. So if this thing's in rough shape, I, I have a lot of contingencies for it, and uh, I th I think it's prepared enough for a really important mission. So. 
We're just going to do our final test, and then uh, we got to get to Minmus with the Unity Science Vessel, but i got to find some unstable ground here to do some testing on. All right, we're getting onto some unstable ground. It's not super bumpy. Um, I think this thing has a lot of trials ahead of it as far as that is concerned, but I wanted to test hill climbing. Um, the bottom seems to be just high enough that it's not skidding, but if I get on any bumpier territory, I may need to uh, step it up a bit. I'm keeping pretty good pace for going up a hill, so I'm happy with the hill climbing. Uh, it's getting a bit bumpier, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. Maybe we'll head off... Ah, over here looks good. Whoa! Uh, okay. Cool. It's still doable. I got the docking port removed. However, we're good. We're still good. This is why we're testing it. Uh, we want to make sure that we we figure out all this stuff beforehand. Seems like 24 meters a second, which is what we were doing, is, is quite fast for this thing. I can, I can put a limiter on it if I wanted to. You can actually do a lot of different stuff with the wheels, too. I should probably mention that. Like, you can lock steering, so I'll, I can have it front-wheel drive only if I wanted to. Um, yeah, there's just a, a lot of cool stuff. So let's bring it up a bit, because we're kind of getting on some bumpy territory. I just want to see how the bottom performs. Is it not going to bottom out on us? It looks like it's doing pretty good. Thankfully, Minmus has a lot of plateaus, a lot of valleys, so you're not necessarily going over uh, massive rocky areas where you there's it's like impossible to get around, especially with a rover. But uh, you know, places like Duna um, might be a bit different. If we wanted to land this thing on Eve, which I think we're going to do a completely different design for Eve, maybe kind of the same concept but a different design then that will be uh actually i think for eve you would want something that could fit in the back of a cargo plane like a cargo space plane where you can land you can send your rover out you bring it back you get it back in the plane and you take everything back that would be pretty sick but uh you know there's other like other moons and stuff that we would go to especially all the jewel moons that we could use this on and uh, those can get quite bumpy heck even gilly is a pretty bumpy man so it looks like the thing I'm going to have to watch out for the most is being top heavy, even though it's not necessarily super top heavy. So let's bring it down a bit. Um, I'm going to look at it from this angle. Let's see how it performs while it's uh, set low, because if it if it performs well on this kind of stuff, then I think we'll be good to go. So I'm just going to go over the bumps here and just make sure it doesn't bottom out. And even if it bottoms out, like I said, I put that little skid plate on the bottom just in case uh, so it doesn't break anything. Check it over this bump. Yeah, not really doing much. Maybe this way. Yeah. It seems like the... Uh, ooh, there it goes again. Oh, that was a good one, too. I just kind of kick-flipped it. It destroyed the probe core, so that's why that happened. So let's go revert to launch. So there's our test done, I think. I think it's time to, to get the... Oh, gosh, it just looks cool when it's all folded up like that. Uh, I th Yeah, I think it's time to go to Minmus. Is there anything else I needed to do? I don't think so. I've got a few missions for the putting a uh, flag on Minmus and stuff like that, so I'm pretty sure we're good to go. This thing looks so improportional and unstable. It's going to be awesome. Haven't tested it yet. Usually I test these things. I haven't actually tested this one. Also pointing out that we have uh, a Gusserum and Burfrey Kerman. They've been They've been training for this. This is like their thing that they've really been working on is a Minmus mission. It was calculated when we sent the probe, you know, the, the general gravity. And and uh, they've been training for this, so they're ready to go finally. Hopefully this thing doesn't just randomly explode. No, it looks like it's going well thus far. Probably won't later on. I don't know if I can even get out of the atmosphere of the planet with this. It's pretty heavy. Thank you.